Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulihi kareem. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Abad. With Allah's name, the merciful benefactor, the merciful redeemer. All praises are due to Allah, the Lord, keeper, evolver, sustainer of all the worlds. Wa salatu. May the prayers. Wa salamu. And may the peace. Allah Rasulahi Kareem Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam be upon his honorable, noble, and generous messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I greet you, brothers and sisters. Assalamu alaikum. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Uh, this evening, we just want to take a little time to look at uh, a powerful ayat from Quran. Which we know Muhammad the Prophet has said this is the one of the greatest surah. If you recite this ayat, pardon me, after every salat, you get into Jannah and a whole lot of wonderful things about this ayat. Ayatul Kursi. We just want to, in the midst of everything, as the Quran is a living organism. It's not just for the past, it's for now and for the future. And in the midst of everything in our life. In the life of the world, I can't think of anything better to, for us to reflect on than Ayatul Kursi, powerful ayat. I just thought maybe this evening, maybe we'll look at this, look at this ayat here and, and discuss for us as we live through all that we're going through in this world, this pandemic, and everything else, whether your life is good or if your life is bad. That we as Muslims and for anyone else to go to Quran, look to Quran, that's our life. So today, this evening, just wanted to, as I say, look at uh, Ayatul Kursi, spe very special ayat. It's in Baqarah, Ayat 255. It's Ayatul Kursi. It's called the Ayat of the Throne. Um, uh, uh, um, the Throne. Or... Uh, a, a pedestal, a, a, a chair, metaphorically speaking, Allah's throne. We know he doesn't sit in a chair like we sit in a chair, but that's the name of this, this surah here. Um, but before we go into it specifically, and as you can see, I have the Arabic. Of course, we're going to do the English from the Arabic because there's some concepts here that are expressed in the Arabic that hopefully will help us all as well. But Ayatul Kursi. Um, but before we go there to Ayatul Kursi, I want to present to us, just look at some vocabulary that you may be familiar with as we move forward into Ayatul Kursi. Uh, some, some important words, all of it is important, of course, that relates to Ayatul Kursi. That's general as well, but we also see it in Ayatul Kursi. And inshallah, we'll also see Ayatul Kursi as it relates to our Salat as well. So alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, we pray Allah will guide us, protect us, increase us in knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, and bestow His mercy on us. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. So just before we go into that ayat, I've presented here what is called vocabulary for Ayatul Kursi. Vocabulary for Ayatul Kursi, okay? And there's about, a meant, a meant to, uh, to number them. So there's one, two, three, four, five, and I think there's a, there's a sixth one as well that I had in mind, I didn't write down. But the first word, and these are the words that's gonna show up in Ayatul Kursi, right? It's in Ayatul Kursi. First word we're looking at, and, and this doesn't show up at the top. This shows up at the top, but we're going to space-wise, I'll put it here. This word, adhan, adhan. And this is the vowel. It's the aleph, the vowel, and the noon, but we're used to hearing adhan as if it's a th, then, but it's not, it's, it's, it's vowel, which sounds like that, vowel. So that's why I put th in parentheses. Adhan. Right? The aleph, if you can see this, the, the vowel and the noon. That's the root. Another word that comes off of that root is 
is, is, and that word is Adhan. Adhan. If you go to Quran ayat 2, uh, uh, pardon me, Baqarah ayat 19, you will see Adhan. Come from the same root as Adhan, right? Adhan, right? And Udhun is ear, right? Comes from that. Also, the word Ithni. Ithni. You hear B Ithni. You'll see this several places in the Quran and in Ayatul Kursi for sure. But uh, Surah 97, which is Laylatul Qadr, and the fourth ayat, when Allah says of the angels, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Tanazulu malaikatu aruhu fi habi itni rabihi min kuli emri. Right? That, that they come down by the permission of their Lord, obeying every command. Permission. Envina, be ithni. So, Adhan is, Adhan, the call. So, all three of those come off of Aleph, Thal, Noon, right? So, what we can get from that is permission, call, ears. That is only by the permission of Allah that we hear the Adhan. Because it says, many are called, but few are chosen. But by the permission of Allah, and when the Mu'adhan calls the Adhan, most times he raises it to his ears, because they come from the same root. Adhan and Adhan, right? And Ithni. So he raises his hands to his ears, right? And by the permission of Allah, we have been blessed to hear the call, and I mean hear, just, just hear by sound, but to hear and know the significance of it, and then we come to Salat. So, you're going to see this related to this in Ayatul Kursi, the throne. The other vocabulary word is Hayya, Hayya, to live, life, Hayya. Its root is the heart, H, the Ha, and the Ya Shadda, or two, two Ys, right? H-Y-Y, right? And this word, and, and the name Yahya comes from that. Yahya means life, living, to give life. And the Mu'evin says, Haya Salat. Haya, he uses this word, even though loosely they say come, it's come alive to Salat. That Salat is our source of life, right? And then it says, Haya Salat. If you come alive to Salat, inshallah, you have a successful life. But here are words we just want to, and not to stay here because we want to go into Ayatul Kursi. But these are words that's there. Qawma, Qawma, Qawm. This word Qawm is Yawmel um, to stand, right? This position that we start Salat, Qiyam, right? Mustaqim, upright, is upright. Mustaqim, upright. Akami uh, Salat, Iqama, all that is the Q, the W, and the M. The Qaf, the W, and the Mean. The Qaf, the, the W, and the Mean. And it means to stand up, to be upright. Right? And when you go on Hajj or Umrah, you go to Makkaum, Makkaum el Ibrahim, where Ibrahim stood. Right? And Allah says also using this word, this root word, the root. Lakat kalak nal and sanafi asini taqween. Taqween. The Q and the M, right? You'll hear that, but it's the three. He created you in the upright mode. So this qawma, qawm, qiyam, we start the salat in qiyam, standing up. And so this is, in, in this, and you see that in a lot of places, but sort of 18. Uh, I at 14, uh, that's the key, when the youth stood up and made prayer. Another important word, in words you're familiar with, is yadda, 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 means hand, hand. And your hands are in front of you, right? So it also means in front. And you can see that several places, but uh, Surah 67, the first ayat, blessed is he who did such and such with his own hands, right? His dominion, etc. 
And that, the root of that is the yeah, the del, and the yeah, two yeah, right? Y D Y, if you was looking that up. And then the next word, the last one here is Khalifa. Khalifa. Khalifa, right? Khalifa, successor, to come from behind, to come after. And we know that in Ayat uh, Baqarah, the 30th uh, ayat, where Allah said to the angels, Ja'ilun fil adi khalifa. I am making a khalifa, right? But it means a successor, but it also means to come from behind. Because the jinn was existing, the angels was existing, and behind that, Allah brought about, made the Khalifa. So it also means to come from behind. And you can take note of this. When you see many times in Quran where Allah says, in the alternation, the changing of the night and the day, or signs, it uses this word here, come from behind, rotating, khalafa, khalafa. It says, yak talafi, yak talafi, the kaf, the lamb, and the, and the, and the fat. Yak talafi, go look it up, you'll see it in Baqarah, and you'll see it in several places, in the alternation, so it used the word alternation, changing, except, etc., difference. So, we just wanted to, Introduce some vocabulary that's there's in, in Ayatul Kursi. Now, we know Ayatul Kursi is so powerful, so wonderful, so significant, and it touches spirit, and it just tells us so much about Allah the Most High, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, here I just wanted to, a few vocabulary that will stand out that you may be familiar with. And it's going to be in a different form, maybe in Ayatul Kursi. See, from the root, there's variation. The root is the essence of any of the words. So they may look different. Some may have look with three or five. But when you get to the root, you'll see that they're related in somehow. So here, brothers and sisters, inshallah, we'll just briefly discuss and look at this wonderful ayat, Ayatul Kursi. And again, as we say, with all that's going on in the world that we live in and the struggles and the challenges and in and, and 2020, the new things that we're seeing, is nothing more important than reminding us of who's in charge at all times. That Allah is bigger than all of this and anything this could be, that everything in this creation belongs to Allah. And Allah makes that clear. And he says it glorifies him in several places. Allah says, That whatever is in the heavens and the earth, subhanAllah, 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 glorify him as the, as the mighty, the wise. In Surah Juma 62, the first ayat, Allah says, that whatever is in the heavens and the earth do glorify Allah as the Malik, as the sovereign ruler, the owner of all of this, as Al Qadus, the Holy One, the source of righteousness, Al Aziz, the powerful and the wise, right? So everything that's going on, and Allah is in charge at all times, and we ask Him to bless us with patience and mercy, and we pray for those that may be inflicted with whatever kind of disease or whatever kind of virus that's going on in, in this world. But we never want to forget who's in charge, who it is that we worship, who it is that we depend on for protection, etc. Alhamdulillah, Rabbi I mean, So, and for guidance, mercy. So just going through Ayatul Kursi, and I didn't start out, but please, if you're watching this live, get your Quran. We're in this together. We're sharing this together. Have your Quran with you. And I always, I do this to encourage us to read Quran always, right, as we should do as Muslims and believers, as much as we can. So if you're here, take, take out your Quran, and you go to Ayat 255 of Baqarah, the second surah. And we're going to walk through this. Now, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. 
ayat ayat al kursi or ayat ul kursi, right? The throne. And listen how it starts out. You can see this here. Allahu. Proper. Allahu. Not Allahi. Allah. Allahu. Allahu la ilaha illa hu al hayyul al qayyum. Now remember, we looked at the word hayyah, right? Life, right? And the qayyum, qiyam. We start in qiyam, right? Yam al qiyam, the day of standing, right? Makaum uh, Ibrahim, kaum, where Ibrahim stood, right? Qat qamatu. Iqama, that's the cue, the the why in the, to stand up. All that's to stand up, right? And to manage as well. Yukimuna salat, establish the salat, stand it up, and we start in this in the standing position. So Allah says of himself, Allah, there is no deity, there's none worthy of worship except him. And he's what? Who al alhayu? Al Qayyum, that he is the living. Hayah, we connect it with Salat. Hayah Salat, come alive to Salat. That's the word. Allah is the source of life. Allah is the living. Allah is the living, all living. But he's also the source of our life, right? Al Hayyu, the living. Al Qayyum, and they'll translate it sustainer, right? But it means to stand up, right? He's the self-supporting. There's nothing holding Allah up. So he's al qayyum just like we am to stand up. But he's self-supporting. There's nothing holding him up. So they'll say sustainer, self-supporting, self-standing, right? Independent. Now, he's al qayyum the self-standing, the self-supporting. And Allah says that even of the sky, he said, look to the sky. Do you, is there any pillars that you can see that's holding it up? <laughs> well, that's just one example. But Allah is al qayyum the self-supporting. We need legs to support us. We need something to prop us and hold us up in our balance. Allah is al qayyum the self-supporting, the standing. Now, the interesting thing about this is these two attributes go together. al hayyu al qayyum the living. One indication of life is what? Standing. Standing upright. You know, it's a, it's a, uh, um, somebody was raised from a dead level to a living perpendicular to the square. From a dead level, horizontal, to upright living perpendicular, right? And Allah lets us know that we're going to be in the grave horizontal. But on that final day, Yamela Qiyame, Kaum, Kaum, the Qaf, the Wah, and the Mean. We're going to, Yamela Qiyame, we're going to stand up and be living before Allah, right? So, so this, so they go together because life, a sign of life, is something that's standing up, right? And, and, and you know, there's a story of Solomon. Prophet and Messenger of Allah, that that he had passed, but he was being held up by his staff. So the people in his kingdom still thought he was alive, because he was standing up, although he was being supported by that. So they thought he was alive. And it said some termites or something ate up his wooden staff, and then he fell down, and they realized that he was dead. So standing is associated with with life, right? Standing up. And most things that's laying horizontal are either asleep, sick, or dead, right? So we know standing up is associated with life. And see how Allah has it? The living, the self-supporting, the self-standing. So alhamdulillah, Rabbi I mean, so Allah is al-hayyu, al-qayyu, the source of life. And we, and, and they connect to salat again, so say, hayya salat. Come alive to Salat. Come alive to proper worship of Allah, right? Hayya Salat. Hayya Salat. And, and, and when we come alive to proper worship, then inshallah, Hayya Salat will have a successful life. That's in, in this is Ayatul Kursi, right? Now, 
and 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 here's more sign. Uniqueness of Allah. It says, neither fatigue, slumber, nor sleep touches Allah. Don't even come nowhere near Allah. Tiredness, slumber. Now, we as human beings, we have to have sleep. And sleep benefits us. Regenerate the cells, right? Help our brain, help our mind. And Allah says he's made the night for our rest and the day for activity. So they go together. We must have sleep. And sleep is related to death, right? Like a relative of death. Meaning you can run and hide. You won't be able to escape death. You can run and do whatever you want. Sleep will eventually overtake you. And Allah said, and we have in the Salat, that Salat to Kairun Men and Nahum. That Salat is compared to sleep, but it's not being compared to something of insignificance, to something of great value. We have to have our rest, sleep, regenerate ourselves, help our brains, help us in so many ways, right? But Allah says, neither slumber, you know, you, you're tired, you, I got to get me some rest. Allah say it don't even come nowhere near him because he's always living, he's always upright. That's the uniqueness of Allah, right? That Allah says, that no slumber nor sleep touches Allah. Now, clear distinction from anything in existence, any animal, any human being that has to get rest, has to get sleep. You driving down the highway and you tired, and if you don't pull over and get rest, well, you may meet death because you fall asleep and crash, right? So, Speaking, no slumber touches Allah, nor sleep. But sleep, slumber, even this coronavirus, all of this is in his co uh, uh, dominion, right? And look what Allah says. What Allah says is not a leaf that falls from the tree, nor a seed buried in the depth of the earth that he's not fully aware of. And Allah says here, after that, look what it says. لَهُ مَا فِي سَمَّوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْعَدَّ That to him belongs whatever is in the sky, the heavens, and whatever is in the earth. Right? Sleep, slander, coronavirus, everything that's in this, right? The birds, the trees, the sun. Allah says, whatever is in the heavens and the earth, whatever is in the sky, whatever is in the earth, and then in another surah, Allah says, and what's between the two belong to him. But also, as Allah says in the Quran, and we already pointed out, they belong to him in his dominion. And what does he say? Right? That whatever's in the heavens and the earth, subhanallah, 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 El as, 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 uh, azizul, as who are azizul hakim. So, even though everything is glorifying him, and that's what Allah says, every creature knows his mode of worship. And he says the birds, right, when they flap their wings, etc., right, know their mode of worship. All this is coming out of this. So Allah says, so there's sleep. In this creation, right? All kinds of things. So, all that belongs to Allah. We're just born and using what belongs to Allah. And of that, after Allah presents that to all of us, no matter who they are, how powerful they think they are, Allah gives this um, um, question, rhetorical question. Men, and we talked about ethne, right? Allah says, who then? Who then can intercede? Can come as a mediator, right? Can intercede as a negotiator or something. Can intercede into a... Uh, 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 to him, intercede in his presence, in the who, in his presence, 
Ilad be ithni, except by his permission. That who, 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 with all of this, Allah letting you know he's the source of life, independent standing, right? Neither sleep nor slumber affects him. But look how it goes. Whatever is in the heavens and the earth belongs to Allah. Now you say, whoever you think you are, whoever you worship and how big shot, whatever, whoever you think you are. Well, who then can intercede into the presence of Allah as a mediator, intercede on behalf of anyone without Allah's permission? Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. So Allah says, Min dhalladhi yashfa'u indahu illa bi ithni. So that was one of our vocabulary words. Remember, be ithni. Ithni. And then, if you can focus right on this here, you can move and focus on this just like we did this. Be ithni. The alif, the thou, the noon. And we did, we pointed, we wanted to, gave a vocabulary on that because from this comes and then the call and then ears. So the and then when it is called and we hear it with our ears, we only hear it by the permission be ithni of Allah. Hear it in the sense that we know what it means for us to come to Salat, but not just the sound, but we know the significance by the permission of Allah that Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashadu illa illa illa, Ashadu illa illa illa, Washadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah, Washadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah, right? Haya Salat, Haya Salat, Haya Salat, Haya Salat, Qad Khamatu Salat, etc., right? Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illa illa. All that goes with the then that by the permission of Allah, we hear the call of the then, And by the grace of Allah, we are thankful that we were able to hear the call, take the shahada and become Muslims and believers, inshallah. And you know the importance of this is, you know, there's a saying that the lips of wisdom only speak to the ears of understanding. So this word, Ithni connected to Adhan. So this Ayatul Kursi, not to mention all the other powerful aspects of it, also relates, we can see much from the Salat in this powerful Ayat. Now, after it says that, and if you have your Quran, you're reading along. That's why we're looking inside of some of the Arabic so we can pull out some words that may not be fully expressed in uh, the wonderful translations, great translations. Now, after Allah says that, you can't, who is there that can intercede, right, into his presence, except by his permission, that you can't just go in, right? <laughs> Allah says, Yet lamu, here we go, Yet lamu, Yet lamu ma bayna. Right? Wa bayna aydihim wa ma khalfahum. This goes to our vocabulary. All we on the line on the red. Listen what Allah says. That he knows. Ilm. Knowledge. Right? Ilm. Ayn lam mean. Yet lamu ma bayna. He knows what clearly comes where. Aydihim. It's really beautiful. Quran. Yet, we said hands, right? Aydihim. And you're reading Quran, he knows what comes in front of them. If you can focus right, right here on this word here. Aydihim. Aydihim. This word is from a hand. Yet, yet. And we mentioned that. We gave that as the vocabulary. But it's translated as in front of them. Very beautiful. There's other words that that's used for in front, right? In front of you, in front of you, right? In, in, in fact, what's in front of you? Accurate is, is after, in front of you. In other words, right? But Allah used here, yet, aydihim. Look at the beauty in the science of Quran. Because, why does it say in front of you? Because with your hands, you can only work with in front of you. Your deeds, you do with your hands. You work, you build with your hands. You write with your hands in front of you. 
Because you can't work with your hands in back of you. You can't, you can't work that way. So, so the work, your deeds with your hands, what you build, what you work with your hands in the Salat, we take our hands and put them here, right? In front of us. So it used, this, it used the word hand that Allah is clearly aware of what your deeds are, what you do with your hands, right? What you do in front of you. So here the word hand is used for in front of you, right? Just like Khalifa is used, that root is used for to come from behind. Right? So, so now, yet, so I eat the him, so he knows what is in front of them. What they do with their hands in front of them. Just like Allah said, he knows what is manifested and he knows what is hidden. Now, so we had did that with yet. So that's what this comes from, hand. I eat the him. He clearly knows what works you do, what work they do, right? In front. And remember, Shaitan said, I'm going to come in front of him, behind him, from his left and from his right, and you're not going to find him fit. But Allah has given to us Allahu Akbar in the front, Allahu Akbar in the back, Allahu Akbar on the left, Allahu Akbar on the right. That Allah is greater than Shaitan in every aspect if you have faith and trust in Almighty God, Allah. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. So, Ayyidihim, he clearly knows what is in front of them. And listen to the word for what is used for behind. Yes. So it says, Ayyidihim, Wamah, Khalfahum. Khalifa, right? You see? Khalifa. This, the 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 kha, kha, the lamb and the fat, as we pointed out in our vocabulary, right? Kal fahum, kal fahum, and what is behind them? And remember the Khalifa, that's what that means. To come from behind, the jinn was existing, the angels was existing, and behind that, Allah brought about a Khalifa, a ruler, a caretaker. But the word Khalifa, it means to rotate that instinctively. In, in the human being in proper leadership, it knows it's not here forever. That there's a leader and then there's another leader that comes behind that one. As we see between the prophets and messengers of Allah. That one prophet came, another one came. Adam, Noah, right? Ibrahim, Aaron, Moses, all of them, right? Yaqub, all of them came one behind another. That instinctively, that Khalifa, that there's a rotation. And that's why Allah used that for the night and the day. So Allah says he know what comes behind them. But he used the word Khalif. That's rooted from Khalifa. Just wanted to point these things out from Quran. So if you, as you read it in English, alhamdulillah, 